So Apple unveiled some new iPads the other day. They're faster, more bezel-less, have USB-C. So at this point, is Final Cut Pro coming to the iPad? Probably not soon enough. So what is up everyone and welcome to today's video. My name of course is Eric. So yes, Apple had a keynote event where they unveiled a couple products including a brand new late 2018 iPad Pro. This new iPad Pro, despite its design change, also offers a ton more performance increase with their A12 Bionic chip. Um, I'm not gonna go over all the specs of that because I think that's kind of useless. However, just know it is super fast from what Apple claims, as well as their T2 chip offering 30% X video encoding performance. I digress. So yes, is Final Cut Pro coming to the iPad? That's a rather interesting question. Apple is constantly trying to get their iPad, specifically their iPad Pro, to be more and more of a laptop replacement. I don't know if they're actually trying to get you away from uh, their MacBooks, but they do want you to have an iPad. That is for sure. And if Apple does want to make the iPad a laptop replacement, they definitely are working in the right direction, simply by adding USB-C. USB-C will allow us to add a lot more peripherals to our iPads, and we can connect a secondary display, whether it's a 4K or 5K resolution. So when Apple announced that through USB-C, you're gonna be able to support up to a four or 5K display, everyone kind of thought, well, you're just gonna be basically mirroring your iPad display to a monitor. And that's partially true. Yes, for a lot of applications, you plug in you know, your USB-C to your monitor, and yes, it is going to mirror your iPad display. However, if you look at Apple's video that they showed off in the keynote, which I'm gonna play for you very briefly, you'll notice something interesting. And with USB-C, this now connects to that, 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 and that. This makes things easy, even if what you do is complex. Besides the fact that you might have noticed that the iPad can charge your iPhone, which is a little interesting, um, they briefly showed off iMovie. And all right, iMovie's been on the iPad for some time now. However, if you've noticed, they had iMovie on the iPad Pro connect to a secondary monitor, and that secondary monitor was not just monitoring your iPad screen, it was actually showing off an entire separate display. It was showing off the viewer of the video you're actually creating. So now the iPad's extending the monitor to another monitor, if that made any sense. So by no means is this entirely game-changing, but when I saw that, I was rather intrigued, and that might actually hint at what is to come. The fact that now the iPad is being able to be shared to another monitor, and basically creating two monitors with the iPad, that's awesome. So by no means is that a game-changing feature or anything. However, it does beg the question of, what is Apple doing in the long term? However, taking a brief break from the new iPad Pro and just talking about you know iPads across the board, um, why is Final Cut Pro X not on the iPad right now? Well, it has to do for a couple things. First off, performance. Yes, are these iPads and devices powerful? Of course, but if you're not a video editor, and I'm assuming if you're watching this, you might be a video editor, you need a lot, and I mean a lot of power to edit HD and even 4K content. You know, besides just slicing up your video in a timeline, when you add effects, color grades, and anything else and a ton of layers, you can run into a ton of performance issues. Even my 2014 MacBook Pro with a quad-core CPU and discrete GPU performance, it can struggle at some times. So the iPad, yeah, might not be exactly powerful enough for all the transcoding that you might need to do. However, with the A12 Bionic chip, we might really be a lot closer than you might think. I mean, I don't know what this chip compares to in regards to like the MacBook lineup, but I'm sure it is very comparable, if not surpassing some of the lower end Macs that Apple has available today. But I do think that the iPad Pro, the new one, should be powerful enough 
to really get some basic work done. Maybe not everything you're gonna be doing in something like Final Cut Pro, but you might be able to get 80% of the way there. Another reason why Final Cut Pro is not on the iPad is storage. You will need a lot of storage when editing. Yeah, sure, some of the current video editors on the iPad do manage storage relatively well, but you know, if you edit in Final Cut Pro, you'll know that when you try to make multi-cam clips and do any transcoding, it just eats up at your storage. I made a 30 second promo the other day for a commercial and it was 300 gigabytes. That is insane. However, you can get the new iPad Pro with up to one terabytes of internal capacity. So that's not bad. It is expensive though, the one terabytes of capacity. But still, the fact that you can get one terabytes of storage is not bad at all. But with USB-C also, maybe we can get some more viable external hard drive solutions for like Final Cut and whatnot. Of course, is that entirely ideal when the reason why you have an iPad is for portability, you know, maybe not, but still you could possibly do it. The final reason why I think Final Cut Pro is not on the iPad right now actually has to do with the user interface. Not that Final Cut Pro has a bad user interface, but it's really not designed for touchscreens. However, look at iMovie. iMovie is available on Mac, on the iPhone, and on the iPad. But across the board, the user interface changes up depending on the device you're using. So Final Cut Pro They'll definitely have to do a lot of work to improve that interface to make it user friendly for a touchscreen. So now this begs the question, when is Final Cut Pro coming to the iPad? Like I said, not soon enough. In my opinion, the iPad Pro specifically is probably 95% there in terms of performance. I'm not gonna say it's gonna be able to do like 8K video editing, but you should be able to get 95% the way there, especially with Apple's optimization. In terms of storage, yes, you can get up to a terabyte of storage. However, storage will have to be severely worked on if they were going to release Final Cut Pro because you can't have you know, your iPad filling up with you know, one video file. But guys, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Do you think Final Cut Pro will come to the iPad? When do you think will it come to the iPad? I'll be very interested to hear your thoughts. Anyway, I'm Eric and I'll catch you in the next one.